My Green Lab is a 501c3 nonprofit based here in California whose mission is to build a culture of sustainability through science. What that means practically is that we are transforming the life sciences, industrial sciences, and healthcare industries to be more sustainable by working directly with the scientists who occupy the lab spaces to think more deeply about the work that they're doing in terms of sustainability. I was working in the lab my very first day and I was doing a cloning experiment. I had separated out all of the pipette tips and the pipette tip boxes that hadn't touched anything. They shouldn't have been hazardous. I put everything in a beaker, went to the PI at the end of the day and I said, you know, I haven't been able to find the recycling bin. Where is it? And she said, we don't recycle at this facility. Everything gets incinerated. And for the rest of the summer, I would sneak back the pipette tip boxes in the car to my parents' house to put them in the recycling bin. And it just kept going, you know, 10, 15 years later, nothing has changed. And so finally I thought, yeah, I'm gonna do something about this. So I quit my job being a consultant and I started this nonprofit. I met Ellen Garcia at a Cell Bio conference. She was so excited about what we were doing and it was really great to just see how inspired she was to take this information back to her laboratory. About three years ago I went to the American Society for Cell Biology annual conference and at their vendor fair Allison had a booth for My Green Lab and it was a very interactive booth where they asked you all these questions about research and sustainability and the impact of research on the environment. And so after participating in that, I learned about how impactful research can be on the environment in a negative way, and it just knocked me off my feet. And so I came back and dove into all the resources that My Green Lab has on their website and started using those to transform our laboratory space. So we have an online assessment that we ask people to fill out. We usually have 50% of the lab fill it out, so we have a really good sense of what's actually happening in the lab. And then based on that, we'll make recommendations. So turning off equipment at night, really simple thing that labs can do. They often don't think about it. Closing fume hood sashes, another thing that I never thought about. We ask people to make some changes to the lab before we certify them. So we'll give them these recommendations and then give them time to implement them and then we'll certify that lab as being sustainable or green. Well, the first thing that I did is I took the assessment that My Green Lab has. One thing was making sure the numerous desktop computers we have are on power saving modes, but the other part is more starting to foster behavior changes in the lab as far as we're turning the computers off every day at the end of the day from now on. Other easy things were putting labels up on the door for the lighting, on the chemical fume hood to shut the sash, on different pieces of equipment to make sure they're turned off. And then there were other things that we were just checking. I realized there was a bunch of equipment all over the lab that we never used that was on and had been on for years. Labs always have these ultra low temperature freezers that have been traditionally set at minus 80 degrees Celsius. And it's really easy to bump it up to minus 70 and that can save an enormous amount of energy. I think that we definitely have a culture of sustainability in the lab now. So we helped support her lab becoming a certified green lab. Then she was able to convince people at Virginia Tech to invite us to come and give a presentation. So I came and gave a talk at their workshop and we just talked about how we could bring sustainability to Virginia Tech. And then Ellen's been phenomenal because she's really just taken the leadership role at that university to bring this to a much larger group of people. The green lab movement has really been coming from me and from my heart here on this campus, but as other universities set examples, then upper administration will start seeing that, okay, this is something we really need to pay attention to, that you know we're promoting sustainability and research, but also as a way for Virginia Tech to kind of step up to the plate. And I think that people who are involved with energy are already super into it and ready to get moving because it's cost savings, easy for them to see that if we start changing the way we use equipment that it will save the university money. It's not going to take much more for this to be really something that every graduate student learns, the training requirements for students. Right? All of that, once that's in place, we're obsolete and that's the goal. Right? The goal is that we're not around in 10 years because we've done our job. 
So we have two programs that work upstream. One of them is called the Center for Energy Efficient Laboratories. It's a collaboration between us, KW Engineering, and Frontier Energy, where we look at pieces of laboratory equipment and actually analyze their energy consumption. We give that information to the EPA and we help feed that into Energy Star. So as a result of our work with the Center for Energy Efficient Laboratories, or SEAL as we like to call it, if you see an Energy Star sticker on an ultra low temperature freezer, we were behind that, which is amazing, right? And so we keep doing that with other pieces of equipment. But we realized that that process is really slow, as you might imagine, working with the government, working with utility companies. So we started an eco-label about two years ago that looks at not just equipment, but also chemicals and consumables. And it looks like a nutrition label for laboratory products. It's called ACT. It stands for Accountability, Consistency, and Transparency. So this eco-label is now on over 100 laboratory products, so labs can actually look to see what the environmental impact is of the things that they're purchasing so they can make smarter purchasing choices. That ACT label that Allison is working on can be readily integrated into our purchasing softwares and systems so that people who go on to purchase things, it's just really easy for them to see that resource. Once you've made those purchases, now we get into the lab. So this is where we certify labs as being sustainable. We ask them to take at least 40% of the actions that we recommend in order to call them a green lab. We have, I would say, at least 400 certified green labs in the U.S. and Canada so far. And we work with over 20 organizations, but we influence over 100 organizations that have programs around Green Labs. So being an academic typically comes with three components. There's research, there's teaching, and there's service. And a lot of times research is the biggest priority, and then there's teaching, and then service is somewhat maybe like 10% or less of your time and your effort. But I'm really trying to, as a graduate student, make service be an equal 33.33% of the work that I do. And the service that I focus on is Green Labs and promoting sustainability and research. And I'm doing that as not only a service to the lab that I work in, but also to my campus, also to the environment.